Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're all having a good day. We're having one here and I sure am thankful for each one of you that take time to watch these videos. Today we're gonna to talk about a gun that not only has a really neat place in American history, but it's from a really cool collection. We'll start off with that. About probably 15 years ago, I get a call from my friend Hank Williams Jr., the country music guy. And he says, do you want to go to the gun show this weekend? So we fly up to Louisville, Kentucky for the gun show. Uh, Ron Dixon, hey Ron, my buddy Ron Dixon's gun show. And we're looking around and a friend of mine from uh, Idaho, Glenn Maddox, has this gun on his table. And we get to talking about it. And a little bit later, Hank buys it. And it's we bought several things that day because... He, he loves, he's a brilliant man, loves the antique weapons, uh, and we got this one among many others. That evening, had a good steak, a, a couple of too many beverages, and so the next day we were a little late getting to the gun show, and we had to get back that afternoon. We uh, decide after we leave the show we need a little something to eat. The driver drives us through, and we decide to go to White Castle. And Hank's lying down in the back seat, uh, just resting his eyes. I'm in the front seat. We pull up to the speaker, and the guy says, uh, please hold. And we're sitting there, and I'm thinking, okay, here we go. And the guy comes on, and he says, are you ready? And out of the back of the car, for some football. And I'm thinking that's the coolest thing that has ever happened to that guy in that window, and he has no idea that it's Hank's thing for Monday Night Football. So we end up getting our White Castles and coming back home. But it was one of those things you never know who's gonna come through, and I thought that was fun and cool, and I've enjoyed that story several times. He's kept this gun for several years. Um, the other day he decided to let me pedal a few things for him and this gun's out of his collection it's just my word for it he will not do a letter with it so don't ask i can't make that happen uh because this is his hobby he enjoys it and i'm not gonna let anything mess that up i want to help but that's one thing i can't do now let's talk about the gun this gun is the u.s model 1803 flintlock rifle and it's important for that reason. This is the only muzzle-loading flintlock rifle that was made at either one of the national armories. They made tons of flintlock smoothbores, but rifles, this was it. They made two different kinds. They made the first type that was made in 1803 and 1804. And they're basically the same gun, but they'll have those dates on them. And that's the kind of gun that they actually say Lewis and Clark took on their expedition out west. Little conjecture about that, but it is, it is possible and some people believe it. The second type, like this one, was made from 1814 to 1820. They made 15,703 of these during that production range. When you look at it, you're like, that's a Kentucky rifle. And that's exactly what they kind of based it on. <clears throat> Excuse me, not the COVID, just a little sinuses. Tennessee is finally blooming. This gun would have come out originally as a flintlock, then it got converted later on for use as a percussion. And they did it by a neat way. They, instead of just plugging the hole and adding a percussion cap nipple, they actually cut the whole breech of the barrel off and put this section in. And that's uh, a, little, a lot more time consuming, but it's a lot more durable and a lot better constructed when it's built well like this one. They fire a 54 caliber rifled bullet. The barrel, the specifications call for a 36 inch barrel, but you see a little variation in them. These were made at Harpers Ferry Armory in Virginia. This was before Virginia was broken into and they made West Virginia. So it was made in Harpers Ferry, Virginia, present day Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. And if you get a chance, you really need to go up there. It's one of the most beautiful places in all of creation. The uh, foundry is there. They still have some of the original machinery set up. They have just a beautiful place. You can go down there and have a meal 
There's some restaurants down there and a few little shops. It's right there on the river. And there's a bridge that goes across uh, going into Maryland. And it is absolutely stunning. So there's your travel tip recommendation for today. But we've got the Harper's Ferry mark on the back of it. We've got the production date stamped on this one. The gun has brass furniture. And when you say furniture on a gun, you're talking about the trigger guard. You're talking about uh, the nose cap, uh, which is at the end of the stock. On the other end of the stock, you have the butt plate. This one has a brass butt plate. And it has a big brass piece right here. And that is a patch box. And these have a neat way to open up. On the top of the butt plate, there's uh, the screw that holds it in place. And then there's a little button. You push that button and it opens up to reveal the inner compartment. This one still works. The button's still in, in functioning condition. Barrel's full length. This one has a neat trait that some people like, some people don't. After its military service, it was smoothed out to be used as a shotgun because a lot of these guns after their military service, they went into feeding the family service. And I think that's cool because it lets you know that this gun had multiple lives because it was a good quality weapon. They just altered it to what they needed. And this one is pretty. It's got a pleasing look. The mechanics work on the lock. It's full length. It's got a cool story. It's been in a cool collection and he's enjoyed it. I've enjoyed getting to have it for a little bit and now it's a chance for you to get it. You can own this one for $3,250. Uh, I will be glad to put a letter of authenticity with it or anything that I sell. I, I try to do it on only on items over $100 because of the time it takes. Uh, but I'd be glad to tell the history of this being in Hank's collection. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I hope you've enjoyed today because that's a story I, I really enjoyed telling. Uh, if Hank does get a chance to watch this, I appreciate you being my friend. I appreciate everything you've ever done for me. Uh, and I hope that each one of you are kind when you get the opportunity. I hope you know that you're loved. I hope that you have a great evening and I'll catch you next time.